Oh my gosh. All right, you guys are actually gonna get to see this. I can't believe that dumb thing did it again. Why? It was rolling so good. Look at this. That it just planted itself. over there working on that little guide wheel. I also tightened it up before we left and then it got too tight so um, I spent some grease on it and readjusting it. It just it was flopping around a lot and it just didn't seem like it was supposed to be that floppity. Alright so we're doing the test run right now. Um, so far I had one broken bail and that was where I tied off. Usually it does pretty good, but we were going from a low tension string to a high tension string. So I think that had a lot to do with it. ready to cry but I was so angry at myself there was no way I could even think about crying how could I forget something so easy so simple so basic and yet I forgot it with all the chaos of running a first-generation farm between different repair projects and kids and just everything in general I had forgotten to go through and sharpen the knives on the baler the knotter knives, which meant I never fully tightened down the nuts and bolts on the knotter frame. Over time, with just a couple of bales popping out, these loosened and exploded and left carnage in the back of my baler. I had been so confident that this hay season would be different than all the others, and here I was starting off the hay season with a massive fail. Would this be the only fail? Would I be able to get through the rest of the season unscathed? Or would it be a repeat of last year, and the year before, and the year before? Would I ever get this failure figured out? All I could do is just jump out, go grab my tools, be thankful that I was at least close to the house on the front field, and get to work re-timing the bailer once again and putting everything back together with tightened nuts and bolts this time. All right, so we are moving on to scrappy field number two. Um, this is my nicer field, so we're not gonna do this one right off the bat. The reason is because uh, the way we're stacking it in the barn, we're gonna stack it according to quality as much as possible. All right, so we are coming up to the first row of this scrappier field. 
All right, here comes Eric. So, um, provided nothing else goes wrong, I'm gonna hand you off to Eric, and you guys get to watch him grapple hay. He might get a little seasick too, I don't know. He's working on his farmer's tan. <laughs>
This is no filter, guys. This is actually the colors of what they're looking like right now. I'm sure he's not happy about my helter skelter pattern I'm running, but oh well. And again, this isn't bad hay. I mean, it's nice hay, but it's just not top quality hay. Um, oh gosh, I don't know when I just. I know what just happened. That sucks. Gosh, dang, that's that stupid wheel again. Oh my gosh. All right, you guys are actually gonna get to see this. I can't believe that dumb thing did it again. Why? It was rolling so good. Look at this. That It just planted itself. Why? Gosh. I'm gonna have to back this thing up and that bar came out again. We just fixed this on the last field. This, so my mistake was asking Eric to tighten that because it was like floppity like this. And ever since then, nothing we have done has fixed it. It's just, yeah. There's a punch and a hammer. If that'll help at all. Is this out far enough? Oh, man. But still, I mean, you wouldn't think that this thing... That's not, that's, this is not the right piece that's not supposed to be on. You think somebody put a different one on there? Oh, yeah. Actually, the hay looks pretty decent. This almost looks like a second cut bale. Look at that. This actually looks really good. Wow. I like that. So this is how Eric hooks up the trailer to the tractor.
how you liking your setup? It's kind of slow. What's kind of slow? Uh, the maxillator. The maxillator is slow? I mean, if you had three, three trailers like that, so the thing that's going to slow me down, now I have to go back to the barn, unload this, and then you got to take all these plates out to make it into just a grapple instead of a puma grapple. So you think that an already pre-group stack would be much easier than trying to group them yourself? Oh, for sure. And you can stack them a lot tighter on the trailer because this has a lot of gaps. Anywhere, all of these are gaps. You can't, you can't hold tight. Yeah. Well, she's hauling the hay trailer really well. Of course, the hay trailer is not full, but it's a pretty good size load for her. Nope, my ride's here. Alrighty. Okay! At least this, I wouldn't do this if this was more than two stacks high. Oh my gosh, this is so bouncy. Whoa! Oh, this is fun. Oh my gosh. This isn't even the worst part of the field. The worst part of the field is down in that corner. This part of the field appears not too bad, actually. All right, who wants a hayride? We're now booking a WT Farm Girl property hayride tours. Who wants to sign up? Man, it is so nice to have things bailed well. Um, Again, I'm not sure how long the knotters are going to last. I still have a 10 acre field to do. I just got done doing like, I think that was a three acre field and maybe that was a total of two. So I got five acres done. And I actually I've got 15, a little less than 15 because I've got another field out there that I still have to do. And that's the one that's looking a lot nicer. So I don't think we're going to do this field tonight. Um, probably tomorrow. I think we'll do maybe that last little bit tonight, perhaps. I don't know. How pretty it is. Oh, I just love this, guys. I wish. Look, at, look how beautiful that is. Sorry, you're bouncing. I wish I wasn't so stinking busy all the time that I could get my horses trained and get out here and just ride. And this is perfect horse weather. There's no bugs yet. Crazy. There is no bugs. I don't know why. Probably by the time I get my horses able to be ridden, there'll be bugs. But if they're rideable, that's what counts. Actually, my Palomino, I would say, might be rideable. Um, he still needs a lot more work. So for me, rideable doesn't mean throwing a saddle on and pointing the direction you want to go and making the horse go there. That is just, that's called a gamble to me. Um, for me, a rideable horse is one that a turkey can fly out of the bushes and me and the horse are riding just the two of us and he might do a small jump, but he'll calm back down and we'll just keep going. Versus most horses, which is turkey flies out of the woods, it's just you and the horse, horse rears up, throws you off and books it back home or does a quick spin. The last time I took my Palomino out, actually a turkey did fly out and <laughs> Because I had trained him to not buck, I had trained him to do a one rein turn, which is basically he does a circle. Well, he was so intent on doing that circle that he flipped me right off. <laughs> he just went whew, like a reining horse and I just whew, shot right off the side. number two reason why Eric's not a big fan of this particular grapple um, because it is looser it's harder to grab the bales and we just lost two again 
So when you lose bales, it really throws off the entire thing because then you, you gotta stack them by hand. The grapple. <laughs> He's not a big fan. Yeah, I mean, so he was stacking them as tight as he can. Now once, once the sidebars are off from that grapple, you can stack it super tight in the barn. But getting it off the trailer, everything turns to mush. And this is nice and tight. These are tight bales. They're heavy bales. Um, yeah, so I guess I'm gonna put these over there. up to me to stack these guys. You guys are going to have to go for a little bit. Look at those sexy headlights on that thing. That is so cool. Yeah, he's really having issues with that last row of bales. And these are all like exactly to specs, 36 inches. Um, they're about 60 pounds, the strings are tight, but it just can't get that last screw. It just, it just can't latch it. So you just gotta sack like four of them there. I think it's a happy camper. <laughs> 